Alright, um, so I'm basically going to be going over <coughs> limb independence and things of that nature. And I'm down with some questions at the end or whatever. I want to start out with uh, basically something I, I came up with in my basement one time and caught the limb ladder. And it's basically a workout that has seven levels, seven rudiments, and you layer them basically in every possible combination on top of each other uh, between the hands and feet. And this, it's not really, it's more so to give yourself um, so that your mind is prepared for anything you throw in. So let's, let's see, this is, so level one is singles. Level two would be doubles. Level three. Four paradiddles. Five. Six. And seven. And if you, if any of you have noticed, six is in six eight, seven is in seven eight, five is in five eight, three is in three four. So there are every time there, are, well, there are a bunch of time signatures with their pattern. And how the ladder works is so if you can memorize one through seven, which are all those, you so you, you'll level one, you'll run your feet one and your hands will go up the ladder. So you go. And basically, after that, you have that down, so you have all seven of these different time signatures and patterns layered over the first one. Once you have all that, you do the second one. You do it again. And so on. So you would basically work up that whole thing to where you're to the point where like a really cool one that layers really well is I like putting paradiddles under everything, so if you would do that ladder with your feet running paradiddles, it would sound like uh That's definitely a little hard on the ears and I'm not saying it's very cool to listen to, but when you, listen, when you learn it, you can use those things because your body's ready for anything, you know? And there's a different, man, I'm out of breath for that, what the hell? There's a, <laughs> geez. There's a different variation and this one's kind of pointless, but say you're doing the same thing and this is, same thing, but tempo differences. So, say for example, you're doing the paradiddles again with the feet, and your hands would be doing any rudiment you want or paradiddles, and you, uh, you change the speeds while your feet maintain the same speed. So say, um, paradiddles again. And you could do that with all with all of them, basically. I don't want to spend too much time on that because it's not very cool. But um, so next, something I've been personally working on at my house is I've been splitting up 
the six stroke roll in certain ways and placing the kick in different areas and trying to see how that really, how, how that could be used in different places. So the first one, you know, the six stroke roll is the, uh, so it's right, right, left, left, right, right, left on repeat. And that's pretty much the, the bottom line of most like shredding around the kit. It's a lot of it's like all based on the six stroke roll. It's like all relatives. So I figure I want to expand how I can use that. So I figured out you can split it. So it's like. You throw a kick in there. So instead of. kick so it's move that over one and that sounds really cool that sounds which is, like I said, this is all a work in progress, so this might be a big old sloppy hunk of poo, but <laughs> it's, uh, like I said, this is, a, this is the six stroke roll, straight up, just with kicks plugged in at random, basically. And this one, this one's interesting. This is cool. You uh, you go from uh, that be right there. That's how sweet it is on a hi hat. Like what you could turn it into. stuff just moved all around and put it random. So I find that pretty interesting. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> well, I don't really know what else to say right now, so I think I might jam for a little bit. <laughs> Bear with me.
This thing's kind of cool. Right here. Did that sound like nonsense? It felt like it. How much time I got left? I'm having a panic attack. All right. Jeez. So. This is kind of fun and pointless. Um, yeah, you got a point. You're awesome. Um, so here we go. So you know how you keep a rock pattern? Um, so this is the classic. Let's keep the time. Well, I figured out. I mean, a lot of people know this one where you do heel toe. Yeah, that sounds cool. That one's cool, but there's a. Uh, there's this one, it's really interesting. And this, you're actually, your left foot is doing that heel toe, but in three. And that sounds really cool over like the classic rock. shakes to, to go down a little, but uh, so this one, gotta turn these bad girls off, alright, so what it is, it, and it's kind of taking you back to that thing in the beginning I was showing you, all the, the limb layering and things like that, so your right hand, this is extremely hard, so bear with me, alright, so your right hand's in five, doing hand is in four doing and that's that's just the start but so that together sounds and then once you get that that's that's pretty difficult on its own on its own but you learn it backwards so then this is switch them. So they trade they trade rolls. They switch rolls halfway in. So and then it gets crazier after that. Just bear with me. So it's this might take me a sec. Stick it, suck 
hatch under here and it's just a complete disaster. Right? Right there, that's the spot every time. You gotta get past that. You gotta break that, you know, barrier. You gotta cleanse the palate. Right. Holy smokes, I got this yesterday. Come on now. I might throw this hi hat across the room, but I'm loving it. Last try, I promise, I'm sorry. Yo, it's not gonna happen right now. Alright, my apologies. <laughs> On to the next thing. I <laughs> myself for that and tell you what. Okay. Okay. Alright. So, the three sticks, come on now, the three sticks is, so how I learned it, it took me a fairly long time and it was horrible to learn, is I started with one stick and what it is, when you're juggling your hands are moving like this. So that basically, you think about it. And I figure, well, doing that, so what I did is, you throw this stick to there, and you throw it back. So it's like one stick, like that, back and forth. Then once you get that, and training your eye to see that, those are two different sticks. All right. Um, <laughs> that nice. So once you train your eye to do that, you throw in the second, but you're just throwing them back and forth to each other, like that. And then, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> and this is when you start hitting knuckles, you bleed a lot, hit your nose, hit your face, hit your eye. <laughs> it might not be worth it, but. Um, I don't know, you know. Anywho. Now that you have that, you. Jesus, go back. You. Don't worry about a beat, just hit, hit the notes. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Not like that, but you know what I'm saying. Woo! That. Yeah. Put in a kick drum, why not? You know, make it a beat. <laughs> Not like that. Yeah, that's it's a very interesting beat. It caused me a lot of, you know, trauma. And problem. Um, how much time do I got? <laughs> Nine minutes? Cool. Um, so, all right, well, how about you guys ask some questions, please? Hey, how you doing, brother? Um, which ones or what? Uh, I mean, I don't want to pick any of them. <laughs> Magnolia, which part? Broken Soul! What? Ah, that song is slow. I want a quick one. Defenseless! No, please, no. I will play that part in Defenseless, though. The, uh, I know a lot of people want to hear the, uh, this part. No? No. 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 Part up! I'll try the double bass. I don't think I can get it. Let's see. Mashuga? I love Mashuga. Yes! Uh, uh,
Uh, any other questions? <laughs> The hardest drum part? Just like any hardest. That double bass that I just played. <laughs> shows? Yeah. That's just so tiring. Why did I do that to myself? You know? but, what's up, brother? How'd you work? Oh. <sighs> Which one? Fight over. No, it's easy. It's easy. <laughs> How did you work into the limb independence levels? Um, like, did you did you just start really slow, or did you have like yeah. a, a method? Well, at some points, like when you get layering some weird stuff, it can take seven hours to learn one of them. And that, like I put a very long time into that specific limb ladder. I showed you guys like a little smidge of it, but that thing goes so far and it's, it's very tedious. Like when you're, when you're layering seven with five, you know, and it's, your brain is just mush. <laughs> and you're like, oh, and you've been working on it for six hours and you're only getting worse at it, you know? <laughs> and it's just... And I know you all know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. When you're like... You're trying to get something and you're so close and it's just... You, you put a damn hole in the wall. Like, you take your stick and you stab it into the wall because you're so angry. And that's when you go to sleep. You wake up. And you'll get it first try in the morning. I know you all know that too. Yeah, yeah that's, yep. that's hell. I tell you what. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, best thing is go to, go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, next, you. Uh, when you write, do you write around the guitar part, or do they write around you? Do you guys write collectively? Um, a mixture. Uh, most of my records I improv in the studio. Um, which is very nerve-wracking, because they're like, record, and you're like, all right, here we go. And it's about to go on a CD and sold, no idea what I'm doing, you know? So that's a little nerve-wracking. Sometimes I'll, I'll have a part laid out. So say, Cry Wolf, for example, if any of you know that song. The intro of it is a Tom beat that I had written before the record was even started. I just wanted to use it someday. And that Tom beat goes, And that was just that forever. And I was like, guys, I want to put something to this, you know? And that's when the guitar dudes come in and they're like, oh, something like this, something like that. Otherwise, if they're like, oh, I got this riff, I mean, what else, what am I going to do? And you kind of fill the space or you work on, it really depends on what kind of riff it is. So if the riff is, if, if it's like, you got to hear what it's telling you, you know? Sometimes you hear, if it's like progressing up the neck, you always want to blast, you know, kind of, you got to blast over that stuff. But, uh, just straightforward, you, you do this, and if it's strangely intricate, you match it. So if there's like a high note, or a low note, high note, low note. And so if it's like noodling around, you can go. And your riff would be like, do you know what I mean? And it would like match together into the. Build it off of all that, you know. What were you saying in the tabs for me, so I can? Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you help, oh, that was a song. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> all right, what's up, brother? How do you, um, how did you develop your um, skill with ghost notes? Because you um, seem to just throw the most amazing ones in there, and I don't know, <laughs> I, I don't know how you do it, really, um, to be honest. Thank you, um, but. For the most part, I don't know if you guys can see. Is it easier if I play over here so you can see, or here? Doesn't matter. Like, you can see the actual ghosts themselves. Um, it, so, real quick, I know I might be over. What, do you know what time it is? Yeah. Um, do I have till 2.40? I'm in, all right, I got this. Okay, so, I base my ghost notes, they are all in the family of one of the most original beats ever written which is the, everyone knows it, first beat you've ever learned, you already know what it is before I play it. They 
leave that second part out, but that is part of that beat. And you um, make that more intricate, and you have all you have a whole world of options when it comes to ghosting. So say that's the most basic version. Say. It's all just, you just kind of are coming up with it as you go. I have no idea what my left hand is doing. It's just, you're filling the blanks because your body's already been over that. You know what I mean? So you gotta learn all these different combinations and different ways of that beat, specifically, for the most part, in my opinion. And as well as just make your body more comfortable with it. So take that beat. The resemblance. And you, know, it's, and you just fill it, and sometimes if you're feeling up to it, you can add a. People see him, you're like, you just, I don't know, people think it's cool, maybe, I don't know, probably not. Sounds like it. But you can make a beat out of them, like. Seconds or am I already behind? All right. One more question. How are you, brother? Um, what's your favorite text in the last song to play when you're out on the floor? Uh, <laughs> I mean, they're all just so fun. <laughs> uh, I look forward to playing Bed of Nails. I think that's really fun. That's got uh, some cool parts in it. And I always, uh, I enjoy playing one of the fills that's midway in there, right before this strange screeching sound on the guitar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh... Adam, when did you get your first kit? Uh, How old you? I may have to ask my dad that question. I believe I was three. Yeah, and that was like some white piece of junk. And then when I was... Six, I got a Ludwig, and then progressed from there. Twelve, I had a Yamaha, which I was pumped on. And then, thank goodness I am now with GK. Tell you what, told you that. <laughs>